Today I'm going to be talking about one of my favourite movies, games and videos on its 49th anniversary, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. First up, let's take a look at this banned VHS video. This and every other Texas Chainsaw Massacre film was banned in the UK until 1999. This got around the ban by being a pre-certificate video. It wasn't until 1984 when every video in the UK needed a certificate. But because this came out before that, it was perfectly fine to be on the shelves until 1984. But yeah, like I say, all the films were banned. Uh, kind of, that's the society that I grew up in. But what's especially funny about this box, it's got a little Oscar on the box there. It's especially funny for Texas Chainsaw Massacre fans because when Toby Hooper died, he wasn't put in the memoriam section. But this company is called IFS, which is apparently in Pinewood Studios, or yeah, Pinewood Studios, Berks, which I don't know if that's some kind of weird offshoot of the proper uh, Pinewood Studios. Uh, they were trying to just uh, pull a fast one. But the original Oscar is copyright a company called Ampass, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. So I don't think they would have been very chuffed if they found out about this. And this tape's got a, a cool red label on there. These are just two quick stories that lock viewers will love. Over there was the cinema when it went to see Texas Chainsaw Massacre, when it was very first released for the very first time. If you can see it through all those trees. And this bench I'm sitting on, when it was National Cinema Day in the mid 90s, went to see four films for a pound each. Uh, I can only remember three of them though. One was Private Parts, one was The Fifth Element, and one was Scream. If anybody can help me remember the other one, that'd be great. But this bench, I can remember really clearly sitting on uh, when I had a little break from just sitting in the cinema all day. I'm glad this bench is still here. Every time I walk past, I go, ooh, that was National Cinema Day when I last sat on that bench. This is the one the kids have all been waiting for. The PlayStation 5 version of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Can you believe I bought this physical game with actual cash in an actual bricks and mortar shop? Remember shops? Uh, this is actually kind of a fun game. It's not quite as good as the Friday 13th game or Blair Witch game. <laughs> Can't put that on the poster. But yeah, it's good just be able to walk around as Leatherface. Uh, I've only killed about three people on it, so I'm a terrible Leatherface. And when I was one of the one of the goodies, I've never ever escaped. So uh, take that for what it's worth. But um, listen, this is just my look. This is. But works playing this game. Really wanted to play the old Atari game, and they're releasing a new version of the Atari console. It's the Atari 2600 Plus. And you think about how many hundreds of Atari games have been released over the years. And this new version of the Atari actually uses, you can actually use the old cartridges. But I've read somewhere that of all the old Atari games that were released, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre Atari game doesn't work on that new Atari console. So I was a bit gutted about that. Uh, one, uh, the DLC that I downloaded was the Nicotero uh, Leatherface skin, which is pretty cool. It's like, it's a place to split into four different people. But this box, this is like why I'm mad, there's a PlayStation 4 game for Mad Max and had the bo two boxes side by side. It just reminded me of that game. So yeah, that's it. That's where, <laughs> take that for what it's worth. Oh, and also, yeah, it, K Nod, it does the motion capture for Leatherface in this. So I liked uh, the makers of this game and they said, you can get play Leatherface. Got a 65 year old guy, I would have thought. And uh, yeah, it came with a free poster as well. So yeah. Yeah, I really always loved Texas Chainsaw Massacre and I've just got some of my favourite collectibles to show you. Talk about collectibles though, there's a guy named This Junkie who's literally got hundreds of individual copies of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And he's actually got a wife, so beat that YouTubers. Got the uh, 4K, the original movie. Looks absolutely glorious. I mean, that's another thing about this film. People always say it's documentary style. I don't really like a documentary, it's just a really, really well made movie. Uh, I've got a boot, boot like here of the second film. It's from like Mexico or something like that. It's got Mexican subtitles. I think uh, my good friend Tom got me this, so uh, thank you very much, Tom. I've got a soundtrack a CD from the remake. It's by a composer named Steve, Steve Jablonski. What's well, especially funny about this though, I don't know why, it really always makes me laugh. In the liner notes, is that what they call them, liner notes? He actually says, he started by playing the clarinet. How embarrassing is that? And then, just to bring the mood down, this is a Leatherface, directed by Jeff Boo. 
if you don't know, Mike Luke is now one of the most powerful guys in Hollywood. I, the last thing I said, I, I want my name off the movie. What do you mean you want your name? I want my name off the movie. I want my name off the movie. And then he hangs up. It's a terrible shame what happens to Jack Beer, isn't it? Let's see what happens when we pull this. This is from Mick West, 2650. Is this presenting mentally ill? He needs treatment. Well, there's a, a nice thing there. He called me a presenter. That uh, shows must look somewhat professional. But then also he said I'm mentally ill. Then again, when you've been defending Jaws of Revenge for the last 38 years, uh, uh, people are going to think that about you, aren't you? But yeah, um, let's see what anyone else is saying about me. Right now. This is from The Will Hadcroft. I've been revisiting Bread on DVD recently. I wondered what the street might look like now. I was staggered when you showed us that massive drop at the end of the road with the sprawling house and estate on it. Like you, I just thought it ended in wasteland leading up to the river. Many thanks for uploading this video. I want to see this place for myself now. Oh yeah, that was from the filming locations we did for a show called Bread. If you're not from the UK, it's this uh, working class kind of sitcom about this family, they're always up to uh, shenanigans and try and just get by as uh, they do. I was thinking that show would never translate to another country, but maybe it would. be interesting to see the US version of Brad. 38 years after it came out. But uh, let's go for one more. Uh, this is from Darren Jones, 2351. They're just innocent men. That's a gorgeous looking set. I didn't know this was even being made. Extra bonus points for figuring out uh, where I was referencing there, the hack of the dog clip. We're just normal men. What do you mean, normal men? We're just innocent men. Uh, the best clips on YouTube if you can uh, find it. Uh, leave it in the description below, probably won't. Uh, but yeah, the Starfleet box set, really awesome, by Brian May and Friends, which was Eddie Van Halen and a load of his mates where they just uh, randomly decided to do a big elaborate version of the Starfleet theme tune. But the box set was also booklets, CDs, badges, everything, everything you can ever want from a box set. One of the best birthday presents I've ever had. And uh, as always, thanks for watching. Until next time, keep it locked. Thanks for watching The Legends of Cherry Hill. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. Like, it's not number five. It's not number five. I go, man, it's gotta be in the top ten. He goes, uh-uh.